In 2020, thousands of people marched in the streets trying to defund the police, which sounds scary, but what does it actually mean? This really is a, an idea to entirely reimagine public safety and rethink how we do it. It means taking money out of police budgets and using it to fund different types of workers who handle some 911 calls, kind of like how Batman had to take a pay cut to fund the Justice League. And in Eugene, Oregon, they're giving it a trial run with a program called CAHOOTS. CAHOOTS? What is that? Like a crime solving owl? CAHOOTS is an acronym. It stands for Crisis Assistance Helping Out on the Streets. Okay, so no owl. I sat down with CAHOOTS coordinators, Tim Black and Ebony Morgan, to find out how their little test project has been going. So I'm guessing you guys started CAHOOTS a few months ago when everybody was marching in the streets. No. We've actually been around for more than 30 years. Wait, hey. 30 years? When your organization was created, the Fresh Prince hadn't even left for Bel Air yet. Okay, they've been doing this for a while, but what exactly are they doing? What type of 911 calls do you all typically respond to as a CAHOOTS agent? Is it agent, a CAHOOTA, a CAHOOTI? We respond to non-criminal and non-violent calls for service um, that come through the 911 line in our area and we respond with a crisis worker and an EMT instead of law enforcement. You still got guns though, right? No guns, no tasers, no pepper spray. You got nunchucks, ninja stars, sword, baseball bat. Why is it that we assume it's gonna take a weapon to get somebody up off of you? I, I hear what you're saying, Tim, but like even mall cops got mace and they protect and build a bear workshop. But where other law enforcement officers are utilizing more and more expensive military gear, Cahoots in their little white vans actually save a ton of money. Compared to the local police's annual budget of 90 million, Cahoots cost about 2 million, around 2% of the police budget. But Cahoots responds to almost 20% of emergency calls. So what does a typical Cahoots call look like? It's really about meeting people where they are and helping them get to a space that's maybe a little safer. Say we started talking on the side of the road and it's noisy and you're overwhelmed. Let's just have a seat in the back of the van. And then we'll talk that's about That's kidnapping. It. That's kidnapping, Ebony. <laughs> Not if they Respectfully, that's kidnapping. I do promise people snacks if they get in sometimes. What kind of snacks you got? Granola bars, some water, whatever. We'll have clothes on the van, tents, sleeping bags. I'm going to just be honest. You had me at snacks. I'm a 40-year-old man. I'll get in the van for some snacks. But besides the granola bars, they have one big secret weapon. Just being chill. Using a technique they call de-escalation. De-escalation is a practice where you're encountering somebody who is escalated and you help them get to a de-escalated space or a little more calm. So what's the de-escalated version of pepper spray? Like Tabasco sauce and you just flick that in somebody's eye? Oh. No. I need to be engaged. I need to show you that I really care about the things that you're saying and finding that way that we can work through this crisis together. But lately, Cahooters have been putting their lives on the line responding to Karens. America's angriest and most dangerous demographic. You know, we get a lot of calls um, that are placed to public safety with a certain outcome in mind. Those calls. You say racism, Tim? Tim, <laughs> this is a safe place? All right. We have a lot of people that, you know, we, we do encounter situations where folks are calling in, um, you know, because of racist motivations or, uh, you know, because they have a bias against different socioeconomic circumstances. And in those situations, I think there are two things that we need to do. One is we need to recognize what it was that triggered that person to make that call. And that if they're and still on two, scene. Slap the shit out of them. Or, you know, maybe try and, and present an opportunity for them to confront a little bit of their white fragility, um, you know, a little bit well, of that three. explicit bias. I was going to say that next. But then, you know, also with the other, with the individual that we're called out to respond to, you know, we have an obligation to say, hey, like this, this was unfair. We know that you didn't ask us to be here. We're here now. Is there anything that we can do for you? So essentially, Karen calls 911 for protection from the homeless person, and then y'all pull up and protect the homeless person from Karen. Basically and then offer them snacks. Exactly. Cahoots is out there helping the homeless and trolling Karens, but I had to see it in action, in a COVID safe way, of course, without leaving my home. You aren't the cops. Technically, I can get a hold of the police, but I would only do so if somebody was unsafe, and I'm not necessarily seeing I that unsafe. unsafe right now. I was so scared that Martin Luther King Jr. statue across the street has been staring at me. Can you go say something to it, please? 
Well, maybe. I'm here to talk with you right now, though. I'm, how long has this been going on for you? Every day. Every day I come down the street and it's just a black guy and he's just staring at me. Where are the cops? Where's your gun? Where's all of your stuff? I don't see a threat oh in this immediate situation. Do you feel like I bet you don't. Right now? I bet you don't. I bet you know him. Ah, oh, you people. What if you walked down a different block? What if you put the statue in a different place, okay? Well, I'm not in charge of statue placement, but I am here to help you have a better day. And if this is going to ruin your day, you don't have to look at it. Wow, these guys are good. And if Cahoots could do all of this with $2 million, imagine what they could do with 90. Incredible. Woody hoo.